Hey everybody, this is Larry from Leading Edge Industrial Technologies, and today we're going to go over using the Universal G-Code Sender and how to set it up with our machines. So the very first thing you'll do when you launch the Universal G-Code Sender, you're not going to see this little video window here that I've got in the in the picture. I can't click on that right now, but uh, you, what you'll see is the um, uh, the Universal G-Code Sender. The reason why I've got the window here is because there's going we can do in some movements with the machine, and I want you to be able to see that. So um, as we go through some of the settings here, I want you to be able to see what we're doing. The very thing, first thing you're going to notice when you set up the uh, Universal G-Code Center, you start it up, is your COM port will be listed over here. Uh, I always tend to hit the refresh button because every once in a while it'll, it'll assign a new COM port and uh, um, you'll need to connect to that. So by hitting the refresh button, it'll grab the latest one. And uh, from there, you can go ahead and select open. Uh, again, when we go ahead and open this up with our machine, you want to have 115.200 baud on there and make sure you set, set it to garble as the operating system or the firmware. Um, over here to the right, you're going to see that you have a command level or a command screen. And uh, right there, you can do your manual data input, just like a, a standard CNC machine. Um, you've got file mode for grabbing files and loading those. You've got machine control, which is kind of like a quick access panel, and uh, you can use this for jogging around. I prefer to use the buttons and uh, or the keys on the on the keyboard, and we'll go over those. And then uh, over here, you've got macros, which I'm actually very excited about. This is a new feature in the uh, 1.0.0 not or er, 0.9, and uh, um, I actually made four macros right away the first day I saw this because it's exactly what was necessary, what was needed. So the very first thing we're going to have to do when we start up this program is with our machines, we have limit switches on here that at the uh, most positive axis or points of each axis. So then that way the machine knows what home is. So we're going to go ahead and go to machine control. And with our machines, you do have to home it. Otherwise, you can't do anything. You'll see this active state alarm. That means basically it's not going to move because it's, uh, it's in an alarm state. And the alarm state is I don't know where I'm at, so please home me. So hit dollar sign H, and you'll see the machine move. And now my machine's home. If we look over here at the work position and machine position, uh, the actual machine position is listed as 0.59. It's because we're in a 1.5 millimeters off of the limit switch from the point that we trigger the limit switch. That basically, uh, the machine moves up to the limit switch and then moves past it. So then that way you, uh, you have a bit of a buffer there before it turns off the... Uh, or turns sets the alarm on um, one thing I didn't go over when we first connect is when you connect to garble you're gonna see this line here connected to com 5 115 200 bud the next two lines are gonna list the garble version you're using dollar sign for help or dollar sign H dollar sign X to unlock and uh, dollar sign H is what we just did which is the homing dollar sign X is unlocking and allows you kind of free mode in there um, with our machine, I always recommend you do dollar sign H and home it. So let's go to commands here. With commands, there's a couple of nice things that you can do here. We've got, um, if you do dollar sign, dollar sign, it'll bring up all of the machine parameters. And each one of these are changeable. So the way to change them is to, let's say we wanted to change, um, let's see here, let's, let's say we wanted to change our our millimeters the amount of area that we pull off the uh, the limit switch so right now it's 0 0.059 in the machine position which is 1.5 millimeters so if I type uh, dollar sign 27 equals let's make it 3 it'll tell me okay so you'll see okay down here and then uh, if I do refresh which is dollar sign dollar sign it'll bring up all the new commands all the latest parameters you'll see dollar sign 27 changed to three millimeters now when I go back to machine control and I hit dollar sign H for home you'll see here it'll move 118 which is three millimeters off the um, limit switches so I'm gonna go ahead and change that back dollar sign 27 equals 1.5 hit enter and then I'm gonna go back and home it again and then there you go. There's your first parameter that you changed. All the other parameters are changeable, and I'm not going to go over each individual one of those. Um, what you're going to have to do is get online, and, uh, and if you just do a Google search on GRBL, um, it'll bring up all of the parameters and uh, what those stand for and how to do it. 
Uh, maybe some other time we'll go through each one of the individual settings, but for now use the default settings on your machines until you get comfortable with it. Then go ahead and visit the, uh, the garble page. So now we're going to go over here. We're going to stay in the machine control over here. And uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit help. Help goes over a lot of the things here that are kind of self-explanatory. So I don't have to read this to you. What I highly recommend is that you go ahead and pop open the help and try out each one of these little features. Um, it's, uh, it, it's imperative that you know and get familiar with this software, uh, jogging it around and doing that. And the only way really to do it is not to have me tell you how to do it, is to get in there and, and start messing around. With keyboard enabled, which is right over here, um, it, with that off, you can uh, hit the left and right arrow keys and nothing happens. But as soon as you can click it, now if I uh, click the right arrow or the left arrow key, my mill moves, you can see it moving. Moving 0.1 inches, 100 thousandths each time. And uh, I bring it down. Same thing. So, and if you see, if you go to the help menu, it says uh, you can increase and decrease the steps. I like to leave my steps in uh, whole numbers, like uh, 1.1. 0 0.01, 0 0.001, because that's the way my I was always taught how to use a, a, a larger CNC machine. So with mine, uh, if you go with the increase, decrease, it's um, I, I use Control Plus. We'll move increase that by uh, one tenth of whatever you had before. So now if I move it left or right, it moves an inch at a time. One word of caution, I would say stay away from the reset buttons. Anything that says reset 0, X, Y, or Z, stay away from those because that's actually a G92 offset and it kind of messes with things. If you're just going to do a quick program and need to do something, you know, maybe you could jump in and use that and like make a quick part or something like that. But really, it's worth your while to go in and do the G54 offsets because you can call them back either G54, G55, G56, G57, you know, through 59, you can use those. Um, and I highly recommend using those versus doing the reset zero and uh, the return to zero brings it all the way back there as well for these these axes. Uh, the next thing is we're going to go over is um, when you when you draw an error, it'll ask you to do a reset. So when you draw an error such as uh, the emergency stop switch or you exceeded the soft limit or something like that, you're going to have to do a soft reset. You'll hit the soft reset button and then you'll hit the X for alarm. And with our machine, we're just going to go ahead and home it. There we go. Now we're homed. You can see we're off 1.5 millimeters off of the edge or 0 0.059 inches. Uh, I work in inches and have for 20 years, and that's uh, uh, just the way that, that we roll here. So... Um, now that's moved off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to a, an, an arbitrary plane here. I'm going to show you how to um, set your uh, G54 using the macros. Uh, again, by going to Garble, um, looking up Garble G codes, it'll bring you to Shape Oco, which has all of the G codes in there. Garble and J Shape Oco, they use about the same software. They're, they're just variations of it. Uh, and what it does is there's a, a G10. G10 is, um, it's explained in those G codes, but to kind of quickly go over it, G10 is, I want to set an offset. P1 is your G54, and then you could go up to, I believe it's P5, and that would be G59. And uh, then L20 means that I want to set my current position to whatever I tell it. So I could say X.125, uh, uh, you know, and it would say that that's what it is so say you're doing like a touch off on the side which we're going to go over in, in one of our videos here coming up real quickly is how to set the the x y and zero z points um for doing a machine part so right now since we're gonna uh we're at home i'm gonna jog down just to a random position Okay, now just for, for grins, I'm just going to call this, this is what I want, X, Y, and Z, 0. So X, Y, 
Z0. You can see I created these macros here. It makes it really easy. Instead of having to go back to the commands menu and type in G10, P1, L20, X0, just go ahead and set that as a macro. And down here, G43.1 is our tool offset. And we'll go over that in the next video on how to use it. So now, let's say I just started up and uh, uh, I'm going to hold my machine. G54 maintains inside memory. So now whenever I start up the machine, I can always go back to that to that last position. So we'll let it home here, it'll finish homing. And uh, you can see it defaults to our G54, which is our first fixture offset. It's got the XY plane, inches, um, absolute coordinates, and it mode is in uh, inches per minute. You see, that's your feed rates. Uh, we've got a couple other settings here that we're not gonna go over because they really don't pertain to anything right now. And uh, But for now, just as long as you understand what these G codes and uh, uh, we'll get moving on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is since we're already in G54 mode, I'm just going to say rapid2 by going to a G00. I want to say X0, Y0, Z0. And when I hit enter, it'll rapid to that G54 coordinate. Here we go. So that's pretty cool. It's kind of the gist of things here. You can go up to file mode and when you have an NC file, you just click browse and you look for an NC file dot NC or um, I don't know. I don't remember where I set box up at. So um, what we'll do is we'll save that for another program so I can go ahead and set the, uh, the zero points exactly where it needs to be. But uh, you just grab your file here, say open. Once it opens and you uh, and you're ready to go, click send and it'll send the file up and you're ready to go. Now, there may be some files, you know, as you're doing post-processor um, upgrades or uh, editing your post-processor output, you may wanna test the G code without running the actual machine just in case it causes a crash or, um, you know, uh, errors out on an alarm. So what you'll do is come up here to the uh, dollar sign C and you hit dollar sign C and then by clicking here, it'll tell you it's check mode. So this basically runs your entire program and it will let you know if any errors pull up here. If you exceed soft limits, all of that stuff, it just pulls right up. Then once the program's done, you'll hit dollar sign C again and it'll put you right back to where you were in your mode as if it homed again. And it still knows where we are down here. So I think that's kind of the gist of everything here. Um, uh, it's a quick video, but I just wanted to go over it really, really fast. Uh, and we'll slowly build into projects that are um, using Universal G Code Sender and how to set up our machine. So please click like and, uh, and subscribe below so you can see new videos as they come out. And uh, I hope to hear from you in the comment section below. Thanks. Bye.